For the last two years, the WD Black SN850 was at the top of my recommendation list uh, for anyone that was looking for a high performance Gen 4 SSD because it has been one of the fastest drives on the market and it usually had a really good price. But then this new WD Black SN850X came out and this new version is supposed to replace the old one completely. Uh, it should cost exactly the same. Uh, it is supposed to be even faster and it also comes with a game mode 2.0 feature that is supposed to uh, speed up the game loading times even more. Unfortunately, Samsung just launched their 990 Pro that I reviewed already, and this drive totally raised the bar when it comes to performance. So let's see how this new WD Black SN850X compares to it, and which one should you go for? Let's go. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient, they are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load, they offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Just like its predecessor, the SN850X is a high-end SSD and it also comes with all the bells and whistles you would expect to see on a high-end drive. It is a TLC drive, it has DRAM cache and it has SLC caching. Though, uh, the specs on their own website are a bit vague and I kind of did expect more transparency for a brand that is this large. They do offer a five year long warranty, but there is no mention of hardware encryption anywhere. So keep that in mind if that is important to you. When it comes to capacity, they dropped the 500 gigabyte version and you can choose between a one, two or four terabyte models. And this completely makes sense in my opinion, because uh, as I've said before, uh, SSDs have become quite cheap and anything that is under a one terabyte just has a very poor price to capacity ratio and it's just not worth getting. The one and two terabyte models can be bought either with or without a heatsink, and the four terabyte model is only sold without a heatsink. I'll talk about thermal performance a bit later, but do keep in mind that every Gen 4 SSD gets hot and you should put it under some kind of a heatsink. Uh, this goes for both PC use and PlayStation 5 use. Anyway, I have a one terabyte model here with a heatsink, and as you can see, it is pretty much the same as they used on the SN850, and the non heatsink versions just have a simple black sticker instead. And if we just look at the specs, the SN850X looks like a small improvement from the SN850, but as always, specs usually mean very little, so let's see how it actually performs instead. I'm going to begin with the PC Mark 10 Quick Benchmark, which is a collection of little light tests that replicate all those little things we do with our PCs every single day. And those are the things like working with various documents or photos, for example. So I always say this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD or an extra SSD to their system for those simple little tasks, right? The SN850 was already one of the fastest drives in this test and the SN850X is slightly faster. 1% of a difference is not that much, so it is still in the same ballpark as the SN850 and the KC3000 as well as the Corsair MP600 Pro. But that does put it ahead of some budget-focused drives like the Crucial P5 Plus and the S70 Blade. It is also behind the cheaper WD Black SN770, but that is a DRAM-less drive that uses a host memory buffer feature instead, which means that it is a lot faster on this i9 DDR5 system that I'm testing on than it would be on a mid-range system. And there's also an even bigger gap with the 990 Pro, which is right now in a class of its own. The full PC Mark 10 is a test that is a bit more intense and it's supposed to replicate 
a more constant, uh, more serious and more intense use of your system and of your drive. So this is a great benchmark for anyone that is looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run some applications that are heavy on the SSD. And here the SN850X shows a much bigger improvement over the older SN850. 10% of a difference is a nice step up and it is enough to overtake the competing KC3000 as well as the MP600 Pro drives. It's also looking good compared to the Crucial P5 Plus and the older 980 Pro. But again, the 990 Pro is ahead of it by about 10%. And when we look at the latency, there is a significant improvement over the SN850 as well, which is enough for it to take the second spot behind the Samsung. The PCMark consistency test is not really relevant to most of you because it simulates an extreme multi-hour workload that stresses the drive to its limits and this just doesn't happen in most regular use cases but for a high-end drive like this one it is good to see how it holds up when stressed for this much and for this long and here the SN850X shows a small improvement over the SN850. Again, this test is really not for everyone, but if this somehow matters to you, there are clearly better options out there. Now, unlike the previous test, this one does slightly benefit from having a larger capacity. And uh, there have been a lot of questions about different capacities and how they actually affect the performance of an SSD. So I'm actually preparing a very nice video on that topic as well. Anyway, what I do expect more people to care about is gaming workloads. And I think that this is where the new uh, Western Digital Black SN850X really shines. In the full 3 d Mark storage suite, uh, which includes a lot of gaming related tasks like uh, loading games, like installing games, like recording and saving games, as well as moving game folders, this drive sets a new record of 772 megabytes per second average, which is comfortably ahead of every other SSD on this list. The latency results showed a similar picture with the SN850X being ahead of everything else by a comfortable margin, including the new 990 Pro from Samsung. Now in this graph, I've scored every SSD based on their performance in the tests that I believe are the most relevant to the majority of gamers. So which SSD loads your game the fastest and which will install and update your games the quickest uh, without those secondary tasks like recording that are not so important to everyone. And this puts the SN850X again in the first place, which is about 10% ahead of the 990 Pro. Wasa Digital is advertising a feature called Gaming Mode 2.0, which is supposed to improve uh, game caching and loading even further. So I installed the WD dashboard, which is actually pretty useful. So you can check for firmware updates here and you can make sure that your SSD is connected at the correct speed. So PCIe Express Gen 4x4 in this case. It also lets you change the little LED on the top of the heatsink, although, in my opinion, this is not really enough to call this an RGB feature. Anyway, I went on and switched the game mode 2.0 on. I rebooted a PC and ran every gaming benchmark three more times to see if game loading times improved. But they actually didn't. The results even averaged slightly below the first three runs without the game mode on. Now, maybe it's gonna be working better in other scenarios, but from our testing right now, it doesn't seem to be something you want or you need to turn on, or at least not yet. Maybe they will improve it in the future. Sequential read and write performance uh, doesn't really represent a proper real life use as well as previous tests do. In sequential writes, the SN850X shows a small performance increase over the old model, even if it's just below some of the top drives in the list. And in sequential reads, the SN850 actually shows a small performance decrease compared to the SN850, keeping it in that same subtop category. Again, I really don't think that these sequential results really matter, especially since those read speeds are still way higher than what Sony recommends you need for your PlayStation 5, which is about 5,500 megabytes per second. 
And whether you're putting this in a PlayStation 5 or in a PC, you definitely need to think about cooling. So testing with the heatsink version, the SSD sensor hits temperatures around 80 degrees Celsius uh, during a stress test, with the heat camera on the heatsink reporting around 58 degrees. Now this is completely fine, especially since uh, most use cases don't really stress this drive nearly as much. And if you have even a little bit of a case airflow, it will stay much cooler than this. But this also means that without a heatsink, it can definitely overheat and it will start throttling, which means that the performance will go down. Many motherboards come with heatsinks nowadays and these will be just fine, but if yours doesn't have one for some reason, you can just buy a third-party heatsink online. Uh, they cost about $10 or euros on Amazon, and as always, I will leave a few suggestions in the description of this video. So keep in mind, if the model with a heatsink is much more expensive than the non-heatsink version in your region, I would just grab a cheaper third-party heatsink instead and save up a bit. And um, talking about the price, the SN850X is supposed to replace the SN850 completely. And in some places, like here in the Netherlands, that is already visible. The SN850X right now costs 137 euros for one terabyte, and the older SN850 is already more expensive. So the SN850X obviously makes more sense. 137 euros is also close to what you would usually pay for the SN850 before, and I do assume that it will still drop a bit over time. In the US, however, it is a bit different right now. So the older SN850 is on sale for $105, while this new SN850X costs $135. The SN850X is a better drive, but it is very tempting to just save $30 and still get an excellent SSD. So, as always, just check all the prices in your region before you buy it to decide if this SSD makes sense to you. Still, I think WD has done a great job with the SN850X. It performs better than the SN850 and it just does really well in every test that actually matters, and then especially so in gaming-related tasks. And when you hear about gaming SSDs, it usually means just marketing stuff, but this drive actually shows a bigger benefit in gaming benchmarks, which is really refreshing to see. And if you're looking for a drive to mainly use for gaming, this is definitely a drive to keep an eye on. Now, Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. If you liked it, please do consider subscribing to my channel to never miss my future uploads. Bye all and see you in the next one.